Hi, I'm Daniel, and in this tutorial I will show you how to break texture tiling with method that Epic used in City Sample project. So we're gonna go from this to this. So recently I've been looking at City Sample project made by Epic, and I found that many materials are using this cell bombing function to break tiling. And I started looking at it, and after a while I decided that I can simplify this function, and I will do a little breakdown for you. So stay with me, because there's a lot of interesting things that you may not know about tile breaking. First of all, all credits go to Epic, I'm just learning from them and sharing my knowledge. So this function is great, but not perfect. I still found a few ways to optimize instruction count, texture size, material credity, and we also gonna took a little moment to talk about MIP maps, because they are very important for tile breaking. Before we go to the engine, we need a special texture to break our tiling. I'm using Substance Designer for that, but I'm pretty sure you can have similar effect in Photoshop. Uh, so here, I'm taking the cell 4, which is a basic form of Voronoi. I'm warping it using some parallel noise to add some detail on the edges. And it's very important to keep the intensity very low and input filtering mode to nearest. Without nearest, it's gonna blur edges, but we don't want that. After that, I'm using Gradient Map to add some color values to it. But keep in mind, because I will uh, take only the red channel and the green channel from it, try to keep your gradient in red and green color spaces. Avoid blue colors. Or you can just click on the gradient editor, pick a gradient and draw a line over my video. And you will have similar effect as I do. And for the blue channel, I'm using the edge detection after warp with uh, edge width at very low value and edge routeness at zero. And after that I'm just blurring it a little to have uh, this smooth gradient on the on the edges, but try to have the, the center as black as possible. After that I'm merging those colors and exporting it to texture. Here is our texture in Unreal Engine. So it's styled from left to right, from the bottom to top. And we also have three channels, the red, the green and the blue. And we need to set some settings in, in our texture. So first of all, mipmap gain settings, no mipmaps. We don't want to drop resolution of our texture over distance from camera. Second thing, uh, compress without alpha as a true. Epic used the alpha channel for those borders. But the problem is that the alpha channel is taking the same amount of disk space as RGB combined. So I've saved this in the blue channel and my offsets are in the red and green channel. The third thing is compression settings. It has to be vector displacement map, otherwise the shader will not work correctly. And the last thing is sRGB. It has to be disabled. Same thing as with compression settings, it's not, not gonna work properly. I mean, it's still gonna work, but we're gonna calculate the, uh, some math using this texture, so we need to have linear space. Here is my material. It's not that complicated and uh, if you want to have it as a function you need to add some inputs but overall it's 7 instruction cheaper than epic version so let's begin the idea is to have two texture sample of our texture the first one will be on our voronoi islands each one will be rotated in a different direction scaled and offset and the second texture will be placed on our borders, so it's gonna be used to blend other islands with each other. So here I'm taking the Voronoi, I'm scaling it, offsetting or rotating, and I'm applying the modified UV as a this texture. And for this one, I'm just taking the texture size and also I'm multiplying it by average of our size to blend it as good as possible. But let's start from the beginning. I'm taking the absolute port position, I'm dividing it with a global scale, so I can scale the UVs of my texture and Voronoi. And here I'm dividing just for texture scale, and here just for Voronoi scale. So I can scale one of them or both of them. After a Voronoi scale, I'm using the texture sampler. And here I have my texture, Voronoi texture, the sampler type as a linear color, and the sampler source as a shared warp. That's because this texture is styled. If always, if you have tiling texture, you can set it to warp to save some performance in, uh, in terms of the instruction count. Uh, this alpha is not alpha channel, it's a blue channel. I just add a reroute node called alpha because I'm using it as a alpha in slab. So the name might be a little misleading. 
sorry for that. Next, I'm taking the red channel of my Voronoi and I'm using it as an alpha in this lerp. This is a lerp between scale minimum and scale maximum. And also, here, I'm calculating the average value of, the, of the, my scale. So I'm adding those values together and multiplying it by a half. Multiply by a half is the same as dividing by 2, but multiplying is much cheaper than dividing. And I'm using this average value to scale my border to be in the like an average size of the islands. So if my island will be between 1 and 2, it's gonna be 1.5. And for the islands, I'm taking the texture scale and I'm multiplying it by my by my layer. Next thing is offsetting. It's very simple. I'm taking the red channel, the green channel, I'm appending them to create vector 2. I'm using after that I'm using constant bias scale so I can remap the value from 0 to 1 to minus 1 to 1. So you need to put here minus 0 dot 5 and 2. Uh, this change will allow the texture to move not only in positive values but also the negative values. After that I'm multiplying it with the random offset varia variation so we can decide how much texture uh, can move. And after that we need to add it to our new UVs. Next part is rotation. I simplified it a little. So here is a, a custom node, but uh, don't be scared. It's a, I, I know it's a code and you need to write something, but don't, but don't be scared. It's very simple. I will talk about it in a moment. Uh, if you want to add custom nodes, just type custom and then you can type some HLSS uh, code inside. But keep in mind, you need to have it as a float to output and with two inputs. One is a UV and second is an angle. And the code will be in the description of this video. And basically, it's a 2D rotation matrix. It's uh, very common. You can learn more about it uh, on the internet or I will just put some uh, video tutorials in the description also. So it's, it's not, not that complicated. Don't be scared of it. And for the UVs, I'm using this value that we just uh, made with the offset and for the angle I'm multiplying a user parameter with the green channel of my Voronoi texture. So per uh, every single island will have different value and I'm plugging it to the texture sample UV. So here I have two texture samples. This one is for every island like per island texture sample with this texture object uh, I'm using the same texture object for both uh, samplers, but this one is for islands and this one is for borders. So the one for borders is uh, using this average scale uh, value. So in every point of the border, it's going to have the same scale. It's going to be the average scale of all islands. And for this one, this one will have different values on each island. And we need this blend because uh, islands alone will have very ugly glitch on the edges and we are just hiding it with this second sampler. We need to set some settings for it. So first one is a MIP value mode. For this, pick the last one. So we, we want to overwrite uh, how the MIP maps are generated. We're gonna use it uh, the DX, the Y for it. But for now, don't think about it. I will talk about it in a moment and also sampler source to shared warp, same as with Boronoi. And the last thing here is a rotation. So if we using this method for normal, to break the uh, normal maps, to break the texture with normal maps, uh, we're gonna broke uh, the direction of normal maps. So we need to fix it. And to fix it, we are just taking our rotation value and inverting it by multiplying it by minus one. I'm using it with the same function, HLSS function as an angle, and for the UVs, I'm using the red and green channel of my texture, and after that, I'm unpending the blue channel. And here I have switch, so if the texture is on a normal map, I'm using this switch as a true. If it's not normal map, it's gonna be false. If it's gonna be false, it's also gonna uh, use less uh, calculations because it doesn't have to calculate this part. And after that, I'm lerping those two textures with this alpha value. This alpha value is my blue channel from the Voronoi texture. And let's talk about MIP maps. So, MIP maps is a way how the game engine is optimizing the texture. If the texture is far away from the camera, it's gonna be rendered at the lower resolution. And also, it's gonna look better 
because you will have less noise in the background. And because we used this scale and offset values, uh, functions let's say, we broke the way how the engine is calculating mid maps by default. So that's why we need to override this. So I created a custom texture that have a different color on each mid map level. And you can see that it's not working correctly. Like the values are very different on each island. So we're gonna create this simple function that Epic made and I just stole it from them and showing you how it works. So yeah, uh, pay attention. This and this is a custom reroute node. So I just called them the dx and the y. The dx and the y function is, is here. So I'm taking the texture chords and I'm plugging it to the dx and the y. The dx and the y is a difference between neighbor texture in value. So that's how it works. And I'm multiplying it by this power uh, of two uh, with exp uh, exponent value of MIP bias. So it's basically giving you ability to move your MIP map lever uh, higher and lower. By default, keep it at zero, but it is, uh, it's, it's just giving you ability to change it if you want to. And after that, just plug the DX to the DX in both texture samplers and the DY to the DY in both texture samplers. And now, as you can see, and uh, on my texture, it looks much better. And now we can use our material to break the tiling. So let's change the scale, the offset, and rotation. And now, as you can see, the tiling is not visible. Yeah, so thank you for watching and see you next time.